in terms of a Muslim looking to get married in the West, what would be your advice there in terms of like, because um, I'll uh, preface it with this. I've started to think that, say, if you're second generation or second generation immigrant, I think it's worthwhile, and I might get hate for this, um, is Muslim men, they look towards the traditional cultures that they have some connection with through their parents or through their culture. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of these factors that do affect um, the dynamics, female-male dynamics of like hypergamy, you get that just by going east. And I think a lot of non-Muslims are starting to do that, but obviously they're not Muslim and they go to like different countries in like the Far East and stuff. But I feel like for a Muslim man in the UK who's like average kind of everyday Muslim, that that is a good option. Um, what would you say on that? I mean, in general, bro, um, when it comes to getting married, I think it's 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 although it's difficult, I understand because I was this person, it's difficult not to obsess over getting married when you're not married, you know, and you really want to get married. Um, but you'll be far better off if you don't obsess over it. But what do you do with that gap, you know? Um, and I think it's easier to obsess over it when you've got a bit of an empty life, you know, maybe you work, but then you do nothing else or you're at uni and you've got a lot of free time. It's easier to just um, go down YouTube rabbit holes and stuff like that. But fill your life with things that are going to benefit you in the dunya, in the akhirah. And when you benefit yourself, you're going to become more attractive as a spouse as well by default. But if you do these things for the sake of Allah, then the added benefit is you get all this reward for it. And um, Allah is the one ultimately who can give you the amazing wife, right? You might feel hopeless. You might feel, where am I going to go to find someone who will accept me on whatever this low salary or uh, accept me with uh, this height or whatever. Um, but ultimately, Allah can bring you that wife. And, to, you know, so you need to make your dua to Allah. You need to trust in Allah. You need to get closer to Allah, do istighfar and all these things that will get you, you know, you know, try and please Allah. And then Allah will help you out. Allah will support you. Um, that's like an overall message I give is, for example, yeah, you're working on your finances, whether it's your career or business or you're still in your studies and you're going to go into your career. Think of why am I doing that? Like do that so that I want to have a family to raise children that are going to be Sadaqah Jari for me to be the next generation of Muslims. They're going to revive the Ummah, this and that. I want to um, <clears throat> have a halal outlet for myself with a wife. I want to, I want to actually benefit my wife in terms of uh, sh the day she marries me and five years later, she's going to be a better person because she married me. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> And, and I want to make money to give more. I want to be more charitable. I want to um, help my parents out. If you have all these different intentions behind why you, you, you're working on your money, then that's a, that's a good you know, um, way to spend your time and effort and all of that. And you're not like saying, I need to do it so I can get married. I need to, so all, everything is leading to getting married. Mm. Because then you just put like, all your eggs in one basket and you just focus too much on that thing. So when it comes to money, for example, do it for all those multiple reasons, you know, and do it ultimately uh, relay it back to how you, how it's going to please Allah. Then when it comes to like, um, I don't know, let's say some guys, I mean, I don't know if they really do this, but some guys might go to the gym to work out because they think it will improve their marriage prospects, right? So again, why are you doing that? Yani, is, is a good Muslim are really going to be like that obsessed with your looks and like, you know, you're going to be showing her your topless photos or something for her to be, you know, impressed by that. Not really, right? So what is a, real, a good reason to get in shape and exercise um, that would work out whether it helped you get married or not? Okay, well, it's good to just be prepared and be kind of strong. Um, Allah loves the strong believer more than the weak believer and there's good in them both. Okay, that's another reason. Okay, um, if I need to stand up for anyone, I, I, I'm ready, I feel more prepared. Um, it's good for my kind of mental health, my confidence to be healthy. So do these things, like part of the reason will be to improve your marriage prospects perhaps, but have other reasons and don't make it all to do with marriage. And the other thing is don't consume um, material about marriage and all this red pill stuff because while like, I've seen it affect people, people message me, they're saying, bro, man, I feel like I, I don't know how I'm going to get married. All the women are like X or like Y. 
I'm like, how do you know that's true that they're all like that? This, this guy, whoever you've been listening to on YouTube, he's telling you they're like that. But is that, is that backed by like real numbers? Is that statistically significant? Is it blah, blah, blah? Like it's just stories and anecdotes of women. And even if 5% of the Muslim women in the UK were like that, that might add up to thousands of women. So there'll be plenty of stories about those. Mm. But then there's 95% others. So watch out for going down and following these channels or podcasts or whatever it is, where they're going to fill your mind with stuff that makes you feel bad, feel negative, feel hopeless, right? Mm. And you could say, no, no, this is the truth. Is it the truth though, really? Is it really the truth? Because most of the guys that are talking about women are like this and women are like that, these are guys that are mixing with women that you wouldn't want to marry anyway. So their experience of women is not even relate to the women you would go after, right? Um, and I, I do think, like, from what I hear, you know, there's plenty of women in the UK who have been heavily influenced by uh, the feminist, feminist outlook on life, which what I've realized recently, Adil, it's like feminism is just the female branded version of individualism. You know, it's like individualism, but repackaged and branded specifically for women. But it's kind of like follows the same principles, right? Like focus on yourself, everything's selfish and blah, yeah. blah, blah. So yes, there, there are plenty of women that have been influenced by that. But Eve, firstly, you only need one, okay, to get started. Anyway, you only need one, right? <laughs> secondly, um, se secondly, uh, if even if 50% are like heavily in, uh, influenced by that, well, those are not the ones you're going after. You're not going to propose to them and like get rejected or have arguments with them because, uh, or you're going to marry them and then have issues and get divorced. That won't happen because you're not looking for those kind of, uh, women, you're looking for the other 50% or whatever, who have the same view of life and of gender roles of and how a family should be as you. And, you know, maybe you need to do certain things, go to certain places to find those people. But um, it's worth it, of course, you know, uh, because, yeah, like, marrying someone who has completely different view of, for example, gender roles to you, I can see how that would be, it'll be worth not not getting married at all than doing that, of mm. course. Um, what were you mentioning about Marrying from like outside of the West, maybe you were talking about that, right? Um, I have thought about that a lot, you know, and I think it could definitely be an option for people, but it's just that people have to know um, that different cultures create different norms. Like I, I define a culture as a norm, you know, I mentioned this many times, like, cause I've thought about it a lot about culture and stuff and a culture just means a norm, what you consider normal. Okay. So for example, in some countries, the man takes the bin out in other countries, a woman takes the bin out just for a stupid example, right? Um, you need to know what, if you go to marry someone from Pakistan or from Morocco or whatever, you need to know what these women expecting, what do they consider um, to be a man's job? And what you'll find is that, yeah, these women might, might be more like, uh, whatever word you want to use, you know, they might be more submissive. They might be more openly like respectful to you, but they'll expect more from you as well. You know, mm. they don't expect that you do nothing. Um, they, I, I mean, I don't know, maybe in other Cultures I know, like Arab cultures, um, women expect um, more from men, you know. In the UK, there's a lot of influence of this 50-50 and all of that. But in like the Arab world, for example, like a lot of the women, they're like, what, you asking me to do something that's outside of the house? Like, what, are you a woman or you want me to be the man? Like, you know what I mean? So um, you've got to take that into account. You've got to basically like man up, take full responsibility. And I think the main thing, for marriage is for you to have the same values, same culture in terms of what you expect, what's you know, normal to you, um, what you're aiming for, um, and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. And like the, all those chemistry things or even attraction to a level, all those things can work out if you have the same view of like how a family should be run in general terms, Yanni. Mm -hmm.